We have been in our study on 40 days. We are looking at periods of time in the Bible, because there's numerous ones that are marked by the number 40. Not that 40 has something significant in itself, just that God has done something in and for his people in a lot of times marked by this number 40. So today we're actually looking at 40 years. Don't worry, this sermon's not going to be extra long just because we're looking at a longer time. But we're looking at 40 years in the wilderness. The 40 years of the wilderness. This is after Moses received those Ten Commandments and spent that 40 days with God up there on the mountain, meeting with God personally. And this is after the 40 days of the spies where they saw the land that God was promising and then doubted, disbelieved in what God was doing and so chose to not obey. And so God sent them into the wilderness and that's where we're at. Deuteronomy chapter 2, this is... Moses kind of remembering or recalling what happened. So it's the shortened version. Starting in verse 1 of chapter 2, Then we turned back and headed for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord had told me. And we traveled around the hill country of Seir for many days. The Lord then said to me, You're, You've been traveling around the hill country long enough. Turn north. Command the people, you are about to travel through the territory of your brothers, the descendants of Esau who lived in Seir. They will be afraid of you, so be very careful. Do not provoke them, for I will not give you any of their land, not even a foot of it, because I have given it to Esau, the hill country of Seir, as his possession. You may purchase food from them so that you may eat, and you will buy water from them to drink. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all the works of your hands. He has watched over you, your journey, through this immense wilderness. The Lord your God has been with you this past 40 years, and you have lacked nothing. So, obviously, in this subject, we immediately see that they have been wandering around for 40 years. Which leads me to the question, have you ever been lost? I'm talking like really lost. Like you didn't even know where exactly you were or even how to get where you wanted to go. You just knew you're lost. I've had two of those. As, well, I've had many more, but two that stand out in my memory that I want to share with you. The first one was... This was early on in our marriage, and we were going on a va family vacation with her parents. We were in one car, and her parents were in the other car, and we decided we were going to go on this trip, and it was over to the Oregon coast. We were living in Northern California, and so we were going to go travel up into Oregon, and then over to the coast, and then down. Seemed pretty simple. Now, I got to tell you, this was back in the days where GPS did not exist, we had those fit, full big maps that you, you know, when you tried to pull them out to see where you are and where you're going, you would actually block the view of the road in front of you. Yeah, okay, you remember these maps, right? So we had one of those maps and we stopped to get some gas and my father-in-law and I looked at the map and we're like, that seems like a long ways to go just to get to where we want to go. So looking at the map, we saw another line which tells me there's a road, right? On a map, if there's a line, that's a road, correct? Maybe. Well, it was a road. It was a logging road. What was going to be a five-hour trip to get to our destination turned into a 10-hour-plus white-knuckle experience. This was a single lane and all of a sudden, we are getting, and those logging trucks, by the way, on their roads, there is no speed limits. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, we run into another, uh, a group of vans with rafts on top of them where they're coming at us full speed, and there's just single lane road here. By the time we got done, not only were we way late for our vacation and super stressed out, 
but it had burnt up our brakes. And so it cost us a lot. The vacation is memorable for the, all the wrong reasons. That's what we're talking about. Israel was on a trip. They decided they were going to try to go their way to try to find a shortcut. And all of a sudden it ended up costing them time and money and resources. And they were lost in the wilderness. Another time we were on a mission trip and we were in a foreign land. We were walking around. We were just a small team. Uh, we were part of a bigger group as always, but our small team decided that day we were going to go for a walk. And we were just walking around Hong Kong. <laughs> and we're walking and we're walking. We had a dinner appointment with some missionaries that night. And I started looking at the time and I noticed we're probably not making dinner because it's like now and we're not anywhere close. I, so I, my friend was the one in the front of our group leading the way. I was in the back to try to make sure we didn't lose anybody. And so I kind of made my way up and I said, uh, do you know where we're at? Without all of the, the rest of our members knowing, I, I kind of whispered. I was like, do you know where we're at? He goes, no. <laughs> I was like, do you know how to get back to where we we're going? No. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is going to be fun. So I went back to the back of the line and I just watched. <laughs> As he led us around Hong Kong in circles. <laughs> Finally, we found uh, one of the uh, um, bus stations and got on a bus and it took us where we were supposed to go. But it was quite comical for me because I was not in charge. So I was standing back and I was just watching. But yeah, it was very, very stressful for him. Of course, his version of the story is different. So if you ever meet this friend, don't listen to his version. Okay. Now, when we get disoriented... When we get distracted, when we get caught up with everything in front of us instead of thinking about where we're supposed to be, we often will miss the moments God has for us. And we will end up wandering around aimlessly, confused. And of course, it will cost us. Have you had those moments in your life? Where just something catches your eye and then it takes you away from where you're supposed to be. Or what you're supposed to be focused on. That's what we're talking about here with Israel. No one likes a detour or a delay in their journey. Do any of you get angry or cranky when like something delays your journey? How well do you do at delays in your flights? Or, or road detours if you're traveling through? If, 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 that, if those bother you, don't drive in Texas. Everywhere you drive is a detour in Texas. So often we face those times of delays, those times of detours. We face them with frustration. We face them with disappointment, anger. Sometimes we feel defeated already. Like, what's the point in continuing on if we're already lost? Sometimes we even doubt if we're on the right road, if we're heading in the right direction, or if we're ever going to get there. Sounds like little kids in the back of the car, right? Are we there yet? Have you ever sounded that way to God? God, are we there yet? Uh-huh. Now you know how you sound to God, right? Even when those distractions, those detours, when we get lost, God is faithful. God 
even though his timeline doesn't match up with ours, or even though his timing of everything else doesn't match up with ours, he doesn't keep us wandering forever. There comes a point in a time when he calls us out of our wandering so that we may experience his blessings. So let's go back. Let's look at the context here. We see that Israel, going back, we already saw that Moses met with God and got those Ten Commandments, but there was some frustration because they had already done some things. But moving on, so we see that Israel is caught in a rut. They literally were traveling around the same mountain for 40 years. Walking in the desert over the same land. Now, hopefully, you know, I don't know how long it would take them to walk around that mountain. But they had to have walked around that same mountain several times. It's one of those that hopefully they would have seen that they were going in circles. And they said, haven't we passed this place before? So they're walking and circling the same mountain in a it's a pattern we might recognize in our own lives. Do you ever feel like you're caught in the same rut? Like days just are the same over and over again. So after Israel was freed from Egypt, after they experienced God's blessing and God's provision in, de in just setting them free, which is a marvelous act of God right there, then they get to go around and God freed them for one purpose, that they would receive the promised land that was going to be flowing with milk and honey. The ones that the spies went in and saw all the goodness of God in there, but rejected it. And that caused the people of Israel to get lost. To get confused, distracted, took their eyes off of God and started looking at their circumstances. What was in front of them instead of what was in before them. So their journey took longer than expected, of course, which they did start acting like little kids on a car trip. They started complaining at some point, they turned to Moses and said, it would have been better for us to die as slaves back there. And then they started complaining about Moses being their leader. You brought us out here so, you, so we may die? You're leading us out here where we're just going to wither away and we're going to be wiped out of history they began to turn to other gods. That's where they made that little golden calf. That's probably where they invented that phrase, holy cow. <laughs> they got distracted. They missed what God was doing in front of them, before them, with them, for them. And so the final straw was when they mentally gave in to defeat at the report of the spies. And so the Lord said in Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 35, Moses recalls, the Lord said, none of these men in this evil generation will see the good land I swore to give to your fathers. None of these men. So they spent 40 years wandering aimlessly because of disbelief, because of doubt, because of their lack of faith in God. They spent 40 years. Even with this delay and with this discipline God had put on them saying, you're going to lose an entire generation of being in the promised land. Of being where I want you to be. You're going to miss all that. Even with all that, God still was with Israel. God did not 
say, okay, you know what? You've blown it one too many times. Now you can just figure it out on your own. God doesn't do that. God is still willing to be our God even with all of our mistakes. Even with our stupidity. That's not what God wants for us. But he doesn't reject us simply because we've done something wrong. He is patient. He is kind. Yet he will discipline us and we will suffer consequences for our actions. That is very clear in scripture. But it's amazing when I look back over this and I see God in these 40 years. God was still with Israel during this time. God was still there. His presence still came and dwelt among them. Even while they were wandering. You read into this story and you read all the details in Exodus and in Deuteronomy. And you see that when they ran low on provisions, God provided. When they were hungry, God gave them food. God fed them. When they were thirsty, God gave them water. We're told that during these 40 years, now this is amazing, this may even blow your socks off because during those 40 years, they never once, their shoes did not wear out. Now, some of you have children. Could you imagine children being able to go through one year with a pair of shoes that they don't wear out? I know when we were grow when we, with our girls, we couldn't go six months before we had to buy new pairs of shoes often. Once their shoes, once their feet stopped growing, we lasted a little bit longer, but I don't think we even got a full year out of a pair of shoes. They wore those things out. You might be able to make a pair of shoes last longer, but could you imagine a pair of shoes still comfortable, still protecting, lasting for 40 years? Now I know some of us guys, we try to keep our shirts lasting for 40 years, or we just don't, hang, we hang on to them that long, we won't get rid of them. But for the shoes to actually last that long, and what's more amazing is that God not only was with them and provided for them and protected them, but he also was present with them. His, he led them during their wilderness. A cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. When I first heard this and I was learning about it I was like that's really cool God's presence visibly seen for all of Israel and they knew that when that show when the cloud showed up or the pillar of fire showed up they were getting ready to move and that was cool but then I started realizing that this was a it, there's so much more to this God's presence the cloud by day remember where they're at the wilderness the desert. What happens in the middle of the day in a desert? It gets hot. What do you want? What do you long for in the desert in the middle of the heat? Shade. God's presence provides shade. Breaks the heat from them. Gives them a relief. During the middle of the night, what happens in the desert? It gets cold. Really cold. What do you need? Warmth. What does God provide? Fire. Mm. God provides at multiple levels, multiple layers for his people there. That's amazing. So, as we look at these 40 years, those are just the facts I was just giving you. Let's learn some lessons, shall we? Let's look at how we can apply what God does in 40 years with Israel to our own lives. We've already admitted we have times in our lives where we get lost. 
So maybe God could teach us something today about that from Israel. How to handle those times. The first thing is we need to recognize where we are. We need to recognize where we are in relationship to God. See, Israel was stuck in that pattern in a cycle, walking around that same mountain over and over and over and over and over. Oh, okay, over again. Got dizzy there for a second. They were in that same pattern. I sure hope that they knew that they were in a rut. You would think that they, they would realize that. Amazing thing here. <clears throat> I was doing a little bit of research. Do you know that during the Gulf War, of course our U.S. satellites were used in that war very extensively. When they went over that area with the satellites, they discovered something that has never been seen before. That there was a hidden highway in that desert where the dirt was different because it was compacted and hardened. It was a highway that was used because lots of people with their animals were walking in this path. Where have we heard of an entire nation traveling through that desert? Oh yeah, it's right here. And so this path was, you can see it from the satellite, the path that Israel took from Egypt all the way down. And so I wonder if, like we can tell the circles around certain places where they just kept going. Or if we just, it's just one path, I don't know. But we find ourselves even in a rut, in a routine. And we can let that routine become our destination if we're not careful. Have you ever wondered why sometimes God has to keep repeating the same thing over and over again to you? Or is that just me? Like I'll be sitting and listening to different preachers and all of a sudden it's like the same message by different preachers are preached over and over again. And I'm like, God, I've heard this. He's like, well, then why aren't you doing something? That's because we're in a rut, just like Israel was. We need to recognize where we are in relationship to God. We need to recognize that sometimes in our lives we are not in the place that God wants us to be. And so what needs to change? Does God need to change his plans for us? No. We need to change our positioning to God. This is really cool here because as they were walking over and over again, the Lord said to Moses, you've been traveling around this country long enough. You have been wandering long enough. You have been living lost for long enough. So what do you need to do? You need to turn. You need to turn. See, we can be just like Israel and we can become afraid of change. We can become afraid of the challenges in front of us. The future scares us because there's a lot of unknowns. Things that we don't understand, things that we can't plan for, yet God knows all of those things and has a plan for us. He knows the plans he has for us. We may not understand them all, but God is not going to be surprised by anything that we face. Any of the challenges, any of the times when we become uncomfortable with a situation, God is aware of all that and God knows how to handle it. But then again, sometimes we are afraid of moving forward or going to where God wants us to be because we are comfortable with our own ways. Think about this. Israel for 40 years did not have to ask, is now the time to turn? It's kind of like a NASCAR race. They just kept turning left. Over and over again. 
They didn't have to change their ways at all for 40 years because they weren't going to go where God wanted them to. But then there came that time when God says, enough's enough. You've been traveling here long enough. It's time to turn. Turn north. See, we need to realize where we are at. Where we are at in our relationship with God. And then we need to take steps to get out of that rut. To get back to the point where God can say, here's where I want you to go. And we become more like Abraham and say, okay. I don't know where I'm going to end up, but I'm going to follow God all the way. Because all God told Abraham was, get up and go where I tell you to go. And Abraham said, yes. Israel said, no, we want to know how to get there, like which steps to take. See, once we moved into the age of the internet, then all of a sudden we had MapQuest that told you every turn you're supposed to take. And we moved from those big, huge uh, books of maps to now all of a sudden we would print off books of maps. Because one set of directions just to go across town was like three pages of, of turns and we wanted to know every single turn. You know, that map stressed me out more than seeing the big picture. Knowing the turn by turn, because that was terrible for me. What if I missed a turn? How do I get back there? That's not on this map now because all I have is that I was supposed to turn right back at Albuquerque. <laughs> we need to realize where we are at and take steps to get out of that rut, to get back to following God. Which means the next step is this. We need to repent of our sins. See, what's interesting here is back in Deuteronomy chapter 1, the Lord was angry with Israel because they didn't believe the promised land was theirs. They believed the spies instead of Joshua and Caleb. They, they believed the negative reports. And so then God got mad at Moses for not actually leading the nation during that time because he gave in to the people's wishes, not God's direction. But then in verse 41, this is Moses recalling the story. Moses says, you answered me. Israel answered Moses after he told them that God was upset. Israel answered Moses and said, we have sinned against the Lord. Great. That sounds wonderful, isn't it? That's the idea of repentance. We have sinned against the Lord. That's what we need to do is repent. But that's not the end of that verse. So Israel answered, we have sinned against the Lord. So what are we going to do? We must go up and fight. We must fix this problem. Instead of saying, God, we have sinned against you. We will now follow you wherever you tell us to go. Do whatever you tell us to do. No, we, the Israelites said, well, we'll go and try to fix this. We're going to go try to take the land by force. We're going to fight our way. That wasn't God's plan. God was going to give them the land. So take the lesson from Israel. Don't try to fix your problems. Repent of your sins and follow God. Listen, when you try to fix your own problems, what usually happens? Don't they get worse? When we try to fix our own problems, we end up making things a whole lot worse for ourselves, for our friends, for our family. We make the whole situation bad. That was already bad to begin with. Instead, if we were just to say, you know what, I sinned against God. Israel were come to, if they were to come to God and say, God, we sinned against you, 
please forgive us of our sins. God would have said, I forgive you, now let's move on. Let's move forward. But no, Israel said, we've sinned against God, so we're going to go fix this. No. Our step needs to be that we acknowledge our sin, our disobedience, our lack of faith. We must repent. Turn away. That's why when God came down, he says, now you've been wandering along far enough. You've been wandering too long. So here's what you have to do. Turn. That's what that word repent means. Turn towards something. Turn away from what you've been doing and turn towards God. Turn towards his way. We need to repent. We need to turn away from the wilderness of our sins. The wilderness of doing things our way. And we need to turn to God. That's why I love the promise in 1 John 1 9. That if we confess our sins, He is faithful to forgive us and cleanse us. We don't have to do the work. God has done the work for us. He forgives us and cleanses us. We just have to acknowledge we are in need of a Savior. We are in need of a God to forgive us. And God then will forgive us. So we need to recognize where we are at in relationship to God. That we're not where God wants us to be. Then we need to repent of our sins. And then what happens is we get to reignite our passion. See, Israel here, they're at that end of the 40 years. That means the evil generation, as God called them, the previous generation that doubted and disobeyed God, they have now all passed on. They are out of the picture. They are not there anymore. And so this new generation that was barely young enough to remember catching a glimpse of the promised land, they probably got to see those giant grapes being carried in and thought, man, those look really good. The pomegranates that were probably the size of melons. They got to see all that and they... Now, 40 years later, as adults, they're probably thinking, oh yeah, I remember that moment. I remember that God was going to give this to us. My passion is now to obey and to follow God. In this passage, God reminds them of the vision of that promised land. But he also points out that you're getting ready to travel through an area. Now, I want you to be very careful going through this because... See, when God's working on us, there's others that God's working on as well. There's others that God has plans for. Esau and all of his descendants were promised this land that they were going to travel through to get back on track with God. They were already guaranteed this land as their own. So they had to be very careful. Now, going back and knowing the story Esau and Jacob, they had that sibling rivalry thing happen. And Esau actually became very afraid. So all of his descendants are very afraid of Israel. And so this, you know, family feud was still going on. And God's telling Israel, you need to be careful of how you carry yourself how you act because I've already given this to them. Don't try to provoke. Don't try to do anything. You got to realize their land is good for them. I have something good for you over here. Don't get jealous. Realize that what God's doing for them is different But both of you can be blessed. 
the promise here, the reigniting of the passion though, is that from this, they made their, they recommitted themselves to obeying God. And this was the first step. You're going to travel through this land and you're not going to do anything to provoke them. You're going to buy food from them and you're going to buy drink from them because you've been blessed by God already. So bless them in return by purchasing these things. Because God has already blessed the work of your hand. And the Lord has been with you and you have not lacked anything. So in return, start sharing the blessing with others. In the way you do business, in the way that you handle yourselves. Going back here, God reminded them of that vision of the promised land. And so they recommitted themselves to obeying God. See, our passion needs to be for the glory of God. We need to realize that God has blessed us already. Even if we have been wandering around aimlessly for a while. God has still been with us and God has still given us many blessings. Now it's time for us to turn and look to where God's leading us. Israel was st stuck in that rut. They were in that holding pattern. They were lost. They tried to fix themselves. They failed. They lacked the faith that cost them an entire generation. So here's where God's word and our lives collide. Have you ever been so stubborn that your stubbornness kept you from having faith? Have you ever been in a place that you were so comfortable with where you were at that you didn't want to change or to grow or to follow God into a new adventure? Have you ever been so complacent with your life that you're just stuck there? My question is, how much time are we going to lose because of unbelief? Israel lost 40 years in an entire generation. How much time are we going to lose because we don't obey God? Because we don't believe God? See, when we doubt God with our future, it's often because... We forgot God's faithfulness in the past. God has done great things in the past, and the past is always supposed to be remembered, but that's not supposed to be where we live. That's not supposed to be where we stay. We're supposed to move forward and follow God today. So here's my call to you. Here's my challenge that I think that we can take from this passage is first of all, we need to seek God's direction. We need God's direction. We need to get on our face and we need to ask God to show us the way forward. Maybe you need it in your own personal lives. Maybe you need it in your relationships, in your family, in your finances. We need to seek God's direction. We need to call out for him saying, God, we are tired. We're done being wanderers. We want to follow you. Show us your way. Second thing, we need to commit to following God's leading. We need to say, God, wherever you lead, I will go. God, whatever you tell me to do, I'm going to do it. It will scare me. It may challenge me. It's not going to be easy, but God, I believe you are bigger than whatever we're going to face. So God, I commit to following your ways. I commit to your wisdom and your guidance. 
So I got to tell you, I got to remind you, change does not come easily for anybody. Nor does it come quickly. Change, especially if we spent lots of time in the same rut over and over again, it takes a long time to get out of that rut. Sometimes we are so stuck in a rut, we bury ourselves in that rut. And so we have to do some digging to get back out. Change is not easy or it, it doesn't come quickly, but taking that first step of faith is what I'm calling us, challenging us to do today. Take that first step. Because the only way to get out of a rut is to change one step at a time. So, we need to seek God's direction. We need to commit to following God's leading. And the third thing is this. We need to trust that God will provide what we need. See, he's taking us to a place we've never been. We've only caught a glimpse of it. We've only seen a shadow of what it's going to be like. But God is leading us and he's going to provide for us everything we need to get there. He is the one taking us. Even when we don't understand God's plans, even when our plans and God's don't line up. Our timeline doesn't fit his schedule. He is God and we are not. I'm going to trust his plans, his timing more than my own. So have we been wandering for too long? Have we been lost in the wilderness? And God says, it's time to move on. So let's turn towards the future, towards the north. Let's turn towards God. Are we ready for that? Thank you for joining us for worship today. I hope and pray that God has challenged or inspired you through this message. And if he has please leave a comment or send us an email and let us know. Also, you could do those same things to let us know if there's any prayer requests you have that we could join you in prayer for. Thank you again for watching. Hope to see you again soon. God bless you.